I'm finding it quite hard to control this robotic arm. But a few months ago, a woman called Kathy Hutchinson picked up a coffee cup with a robotic arm. It was a special event because Kathy is paralyzed from the neck down. She was controlling the robot arm just with her thoughts. This remarkable moment was the result of five years' intense collaboration between Kathy and a team of over 40 scientists. Our brains are buzzing with electrical activity, signals whizzing around all the time. And they listened in on those signals, isolated the ones that are just associated with moving one hand, and then used those signals to control an external device. Lee Hochberg, who led the research, is going to show me how it all works. Starting with a brain on loan from the medical school. Oh, it's got stuff at the bottom. It does. The stuff would be the, it's the spinal cord. If you have a stroke, it can disrupt the connections between your motor cortex and your spinal cord, leaving you paralysed. But remarkably, when we imagine moving, we still generate signals in our motor cortex that can be detected with electrodes. So tell me what this is. So this is the, the brain gain implant uh, that we've been using in our uh, clinical trials. If you squint in your eyes, there's a uh, hundred tiny electrodes, each of which is either a millimeter or a millimeter and a half long. So it would be placed essentially right on the motor cortex, right about there. And then the cells of interest are somewhere between a millimeter or a millimeter and a half deep uh, inside the brain. Soon after the implant was placed in Kathy's brain, Lee's team recorded this signal from a single neuron. It's the sound of Kathy's thoughts as she imagines moving her hand. Open your hand. Relax. You can hear it firing away, that rat-a-tat-tat, that's kind of staccato crackling like an old AM radio. And uh, that's the language of the nervous system. It's how neurons talk to neurons. It's how neurons talk to muscle. And that's the language that we're trying to decode. It took a long time. But gradually, the team learned to recognize Kathy's different brain signals as she imagined moving her hand in different directions, until they were finally able to use them to drive the robotic arm. How did you feel when that happened? It was an amazing moment for her. It was an amazing moment for all of us on the research team. And it suggested that we're, we're on our way towards developing a technology that would allow somebody with paralysis to regain some of that mobility and that independence that they lost. 